complement. So, and that brings us to the end of example number two. Example number three. Let the universal set U be the set of integers. That is, X, U is, is equal to X such that 0 is less than X, X and X is less than or equal to 10. That is, 0 is less than X and X is less than or equal to 10. Find the complement of of P, which is equal to X, which is a member, which is so that X is a member of U, that is universal set, and X is not divisible by four. Now, we said our P, our, our universal set is equal to one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This equals to sign actually gives us uh, that 10 is inclusive. Then set P is equals to that X is not divisible by 4. Now for our P, Elements that are not divisible by 4 are 1, 2, 3, 4 is divisible by 4, that's 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10. Now, the now says we should find the complement of P. Complement of P. That means P complement is equal to. Uh, elements in U but not in P. That is, element that does not belong to P, but we can easily find them in U. The logic is just that elements that are divisible by 4, which is 4 and 8. Here, 4 is not in P, but it's in U. 8 is not in P, but it's in U. So, this gives us our final answer that, that is, what we are interested in here is elements that are divisible by 4. P is a set of elements that are not divisible by 4. Now, we now say P complements. That means elements that are divisible by 4. And that is just 4 and 8. Information below to answer questions A and B. Just as we can see here, the elements of set P are 2, 1, 3, 9, and half. 9, and then we have half. We have three sets here. Set Q is equal to 1, 2 and a half, 3, and then 7. R, set R is equal to 5, 4, and then 2 and a half. Then we are now being asked to find P union Q union R and then P union Q intersection R. Here, our point of interest for A, question number A, is P union Q union R. That is, the elements that are found in P, Q, and R without repetition. That means P union Q union R is equal to 1 half, we start with half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, oh, we've omitted something here, before 3 we are going to be having Two and a half. That's two and a half. Three. 
3, then we have 4, 5, 7, and then 9. Now, we are not for B, that is the final answer for A. But for B, here we are concerned with P, we first find P union Q, P union Q, um, let's find Q intersection R, and then we now find P union Q intersection R. Or we can also find P union Q, and then we now find the element that belongs to P and Q, and then R. It all depends on the one we are interested in. P union Q, first find P union Q, which is equal to um, P union Q, that's one, that's half, one, two, two and a half, three, seven, and then we have nine. Then we have, uh, these are P union Q. Now, the elements that belong to P union Q and then R at the same time. Thus, we'll be having one half, one, two, two and a half. Half, one and two are not in half, but we have two and a half. Four and five are not here. Three is here, but not in R. So, and then nine is here, but not in R. So, our P union Q intersection R, uh, intersection R is equal to uh, two and a half, which is a unit set or a single thing. Example number five. In a class of 80 students, every student are asked to study economics or geography, or both economics and geography. If 65 students study economics and 50 students study geography, how many studied both subjects? From this question, we are made to know that all the students are meant to study either of economics or geography or both. That is, we don't have exemption of a situation, we don't have a situation whereby a student is being exempted from taking one of the two. And that is, each student just have to study either of economics or geography. Now, and our union, uh, our universal sense is the number of students in the class. Just you have been here, and the number of students offering economics is 65, and number of students offering geography is 50. And uh, for us to get, they now said, how many studied both subjects? That means we are looking for, uh, what we are looking for is E intersection G. That is, the number of students that studied both. Whenever we hear both, that means we are talking with about uh, intersection. If it is and, then we are talking about union. Now, for us to get this, this is our unknown. For us to get that, our n uh, number of those that study both uh, economics and geography, E union G, is equal to number of those that study economics plus number of those that studied uh, geography minus number of those that studied both economics and geography. Therefore, from there, we can easily say that uh, our unknown, we can make this our unknown, the subject of the formula. Mm -hmm. We can make this our subject of formula. This is our universal set. So if we should make this uh, subject of formula, by the time it's crossing, it will become positive. By the time this one is crossing the equal to sign, it will become negative. So we will now be having this 
E intersection G is equals to N is equals to no, uh, number of those that study economics plus number of those that study geography minus number of those that study uh, number of students that offer both that offer economics and geography. Number of students that offer ge geography, which is our universal set. So, which is equal to number of those that offer uh, the economics is 65. Number of those that offer geography is 50. Now, number of students that offer economics and geography is 80. Which is equal to 65 plus 50 is 115 minus 80. So the number of students that study both uh, economics and geography is 35 students, which is our final answer. Example number six. In a certain class, 22 students take one or more of chemistry, economics, and government. At 12 take economics, which is noted as E, capital letter E. 8 take government, which is represented with capital letter G. And 7 takes chemistry, which is